Welcome to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, the official Monster Jam podcast. I'm Scott Jordan. My guest this week has been a lifelong fan of Monster Jam. He's the former Monster Jam television host and is now a big time star on Netflix and ballers. It's my pleasure to go to Peoria, Illinois on the Great Clips Hotline to welcome in Ryan Lacoste. Ryan, welcome to Inside Monster Jam. Scott, thanks for having me. Sorry I can't be there in Florida. I got you some Reese's Peanut Butter Cups because I know you love them, but I ate them all anyway. So uh, next time. I'll have I some do. Point. My cholesterol doesn't love them, but that's another conversation <laughs> at another time. So we all, we often use the term super fan, a superstar when it comes to drivers, but you took a different route. You were a super fan, a self-proclaimed monster truck nerd uh, growing up as a kid, which I love that. Uh, and you became a superstar announcer. So uh, let's go back to when you got interested in monster trucks. Uh, from the beginning of life, uh, my dad, actually my parents would take me to the grocery store and I had ADHD and this is before there was like information on how to handle all of that. So the one thing they could do to keep me calm in the grocery store was they would buy me a monster truck at the end of it if I was good. And so that kind of started my love of monster trucks. And I wish I still had those because those original trucks are all worth like 500 to a thousand bucks. And even in in, in bad shape, but uh, from there it went to like the Chicago Amphitheater was one of my first monster truck shows. Uh, and then I uh, spent a lot of time in Great Lakes Dragway up in Wisconsin, uh, Santa Fe Speedway, uh, Kankakee Speedway, uh, and even in what's now the Allstate Arena, uh, back then the Rosemont Horizon, when uh, Chicago style racing was just one truck at a time, uh, racing around a big mud bog pit. and so. Uh, from there, the the love of monster trucks grew, and before I knew it, uh, I was a part of one of the biggest motorsport industries in the world, and it, it was pretty awesome. Oh, and, and a lot of kids, when they see monster trucks and they see the drivers, they're larger than life superstars. They want to be behind the wheel. You wanted to take a different route. So, at what point in time did you realize, you know, I think I could try this announcing thing with the Monster Jam? Well, I mean, don't get it wrong. I always wanted to drive, uh, and then you know, being on the road to you kind of see some of the things like. Drivers always fixing their trucks after shows uh, like that. This summer, I saw Chris Kohler working on a planetary for two and a half hours just trying to get it off. Yeah. Uh, and so now I'm like, I'm glad I took the host route because we don't have to do a lot of that hard work. Um, but a, a radio intern um, went off to work for Monster Jam and Feld. Her name was Jessica. And uh, on Facebook, she's like, leaving the world finals, going on vacation. And I was like, wait, isn't Vegas the ultimate family vacation destination, as Scott Douglas would say back then? And She's like, well, I work for Monster Jam. I'm like, I love monster trucks. And she said, we're looking for hosts. And I said, yes, I'd love to take whatever next step is there. And uh, a few months later, Scott Douglas called my phone and and uh, he was kind of taken aback too because I was like, wait, like you like Scott Douglas? Uh, and a couple of months later, I was in Florida auditioning and, uh, you know, they thought I was just going to be some big super fan and not really, you know, pay attention to what was going on. But, you know, I was all in. I was ready to go. And before I knew it, uh, in that first season, they were putting me uh, in Nashville, my first weekend of shows and uh, got a couple stadium shows that year and even got the invite to World Finals to do some crowd work. Well, and let's not undersell it just because we're not changing planetaries for two and a half hours. We still do some hard work out there as announcers, all right? So let's not undersell it a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. we don't do the dirty work. All right, so you didn't have to send in like any sort of demo because the audition process from when you got hired to when I got hired tra changed dramatically, but you're still back in that old school where, you know, you if somebody sit, puts in a good word, you get a phone call and you're out there, man, doing it. Yeah, and it was kind of the beginning of what is now the audition process for Monster Jam. I mean, we still had to go to Florida and audition, um, but it wasn't like go somewhere first to audition and, and break it down. Like it was just kind of a word of mouth thing. Someone would say, hey, uh, here's a recommendation uh, of someone who I think could host. And, you know, they were looking for people with radio or television experience uh, and, and they found me. And, and what a jewel, uh, diamond in the rough you were, <laughs> sir. Uh, what was your first impression when you met Scott Douglas in person? Oh, I was thrilled. I mean, in, in, in him and then uh, Brian Welch, they picked me up from the airport and I was just talking their ear off about old school monster trucks. I'm like, you remember Chopper Monster? Do you remember Goliath? Do you remember all these things? And um, knowing that um, Brian had crashed his truck, uh, and it, it showed up an event that I was at when I was younger. And there's nothing more disappointing when you're a kid than just seeing a monster truck that's broken on a trailer, not running uh, while the other ones are. And so there was a good laugh about that. And um I, I was just excited. I wanted to impress everyone. I wanted to do a good job and I wanted this opportunity because 
I didn't know where it was going to take me. I just was like, yeah, free monster truck shows. Let's go. So they pick you up from the airport. You talk their ear off and, you know, maybe they just gave you the job to shut you up, man. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. It, it did work. And you, and what it worked a, with my wife too. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's one way to do it. Uh, we'll, we'll dive into that here a little bit later. Coming up, we are just getting started with Ryan Lacoste. We're going to talk about his relationship with Scott Douglas and working with the man on television. That's all coming up next on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm joined this week on the Great Clips Hotline by former television host Ryan Lacoste. So we're just getting out here to uh, you meeting Scott Douglas, getting put on the road. Eventually, you start working with Scott Douglas, and all of our viewers and listeners know Scott Douglas is the legendary Hall of Fame voice of Monster Jam, the GOAT, and you get put into a, an incredible position pretty early in your career, Ryan, where you're right there next to Scott. Talk about that situation and how you were able to handle that pressure. Well, and as I mentioned, you know, we kind of started that audition phase that has grown into what it is now. Uh, and so Scott now sits in the seats and takes notes on like 14 pieces of paper because he writes so big, if you've ever seen some of his <laughs> notes. And uh, he, he actually stood like over your shoulder and would help you. Now, some people would get nervous and it was intense when Scott Douglas is looking over your shoulder, like giving you the right advice. And you want to make sure that you you do a good job, not just for, you know, your your boss, but also for all of the people there. But it was it was kind of intense. It can be intimidating because, again, here's a guy who I've seen on TV my whole life, who I've just thought is the bee's knees and really has been one of the more iconic, I think, faces, voices, names in the sport, even though he hasn't driven a truck. Uh, but this is a guy that, you know, you want to impress and can also help you continue to further your career in this industry. So uh, I think that not having him look over your shoulder while you're announcing is great. Uh, and I think that the way that uh, Scott has become more of a coach and a leader for uh, not just talent with Monster Jam, but with other Feld properties, I think is awesome. When I started doing uh, mass communications with radio and television in college, I wanted to learn the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, I wanted to be on the camera, but I also wanted to know that there would be a career if it didn't happen, you know? And so uh, I like, and I, I love the way that his career has progressed into what he's doing now. And, you know, he's worked with you, he's worked with me, he's worked with uh, so many amazing hosts now and talents uh, within Monster Jam that he's really kind of changed what a host presentation is right. like too. Well, and when you're in front of the camera, they're, they're, for for most ninety eight percent of the of the you know talent in front of the camera, there is an expiration date. There's a shelf life there. You know, there's there's a, some people in the industry that are fortunate enough to go out on their own terms. You know, when when they're you know, get up, get up in age and they just don't want to do it. They want to retire on their own. But for most of us, you know, you do have to try to make yourself as valuable as you can. And Scott is, Scott is a, a prime example of that, as you mentioned, and he gives you those tools, but I do want to go back to, you know, him taking notes, uh, Scott Douglas's note sessions, you know, can go on until midnight <laughs> at times, you know, you're, you're there uh, on a Saturday at eight o'clock in the morning, you're done at nine 30, 10 o'clock. And then he comes down with his notepad. And I mean, you're there till midnight, but those notes, each one of them meticulously helps you for the next event. And that's the point too. Like some people get really upset by constructive criticism and, you know, you come off a show that energy rush uh, and, and then you're told what you, you could do better. And some people take that the wrong way. So to anybody who wants to host anything or be in kind of a mentee role, uh, you, you take that constructive criticism. Don't take it to heart. Uh, if you want to get better, listen to what people who have done it uh, will tell you and it pays off. It, it truly has. At what point in time, Ryan, did you get put on television with Monster Jam? Uh, so my second year um, was the first FS1 tour. It was Bob Dillner and Scott Douglas. And I did the show intro from wherever we were at, the location. And uh, first time, because my radio name at the time was Ryan Black. So the first episode, I was like, my name is Ryan Blackoss. <laughs> and, and so while they were editing it, they kind of had some some laughs about that. And then... Um, it was, uh, the next season where I got to, uh, I wasn't on TV at all, but I did get to go into the booth with Frank and Scott, uh, Frank Kremel and Scott Douglas for the world finals call. And I was so nervous and I was, it was awful. Um, thankfully somebody turned the microphones the wrong way. And so the audio wasn't the greatest. And so, um, no one really comments on my dismal performance. 
No, it, it, it was definitely not dismal at all. I went back and watched that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, I remember the first time you told me I was going to be on TV and I was in Atlantic City at the time uh, doing another show. It was all off season for me with Monster Jam. And I got so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on TV. And I went and watched it. And it was like the tip of my nose doing it. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Coming up, we're going to talk more about Ryan's Monster Jam television career. That is next on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan. This week, I am joined by Ryan Lacoste as we talk about his career with Monster Jam. And where we left off, Ryan, was you started doing television. And there's, the, of course, the BKT tires, which we'll get to in the fan questions, which you became synonymous for. But uh, you start doing television early on your second year. Eventually, you know, you're on TV with Scott Douglas. Did you know at any point in time that you were being groomed to replace him as the play-by-play host for Monster Jam? Not at first, but as it started to kind of dive deeper into it, and then when I was initially the lead host, uh, that's when it was told to me that my first season of live events, Scott, and again, Brian Welch, we were in Lowellville, Kentucky. Uh, they both told me, looked at Scott and said, you you do realize you've, you've probably found your replacement. And I think Scott kind of knew. And like, I texted my dad the other day. I was like, I've got a couple more years, I think, before I really age out of this game. And I get it. Um, and like that hurt to text. But, yeah, I understand it's it's entertainment. It's business. It's it's all about presentation and putting the best one out there. And, and I'm excited to see some of this younger talent eventually, you know, come up and um, put their name and put their twist on on this sport. And, and I think that it's it's just been a, a fun ride. Um, but Scott just was really nice to me leading up to it. I could tell something was up. And then when he called me and told me, because again, I thought I blew it, honestly, after that, that FS1, uh, the, uh, the world finals episode, I just, I just wasn't in my best frame of mind. I was so nervous. And um, eventually it, it just kind of came up. And then everyone started telling me that um, this was kind of a plan that had been in the works. And so I was just thrilled and uh, beyond elated and and really excited to see what would happen next. Was there any fan backlash towards you when you started on TV and Scott wasn't there uh, with you as the voice of Monster Jam anymore? I mean, this is pretty much what fans uh, as their childhoods grew up, you as, as as well, me as well, as Scott was as the voice of Monster Jam. And then now Ryan Lacoste is essentially the voice of Monster Jam. So what what fan backlash was there for you, if any? I mean, so, you know, you know, yeah, you're yeah, so I know. excited oh, I know. to announce this I know. I know. <laughs> and you do. And everyone's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah, and you just read some of the stuff and you're like, why are you so mean to somebody you yeah. really don't know? Uh, and, you know, I yeah, no offense, but, you know, when I see when I saw it at first with you, I. Like you get a good chuckle because I was like, mm. yeah, because they were clamoring <laughs> for you to come back. <laughs> they, they couldn't wait to get you out of the door. They yeah. wanted Scott Douglas back. Then I come in and now, oh, we want Ryan Lacoste back too, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, but I mean, you know, I get it. It's it's not hard. It, it's hard to replace somebody who's been so legendary, whether it's radio yeah. or Monster Jam or late night television. Uh, I mean, there are going to be people who are never going to be happy with even even if you do everything right. Uh, you just got to do your thing and know that there's a reason you were given that opportunity. Right. And uh, but that's kind of what turned into like that whole BKT thing. Um, someone uh, said I had a huge forehead and I was like about the size of a BKT tire. <laughs> and then that's where the memes yeah. started coming in. And and uh, <laughs> if that's what somebody's going to complain about, then you're doing something right. OK, <laughs> hey, it's it's gotten a lot. Of, yeah. You know, as I'm getting older, it's getting thinner and it's getting bigger. So does BKT make bigger tires? Yeah. Well, forehead size tires. Uh, so you, you get that backlash. You, you go through it. Um, it it's it. Nobody will ever replace Scott Douglas. Not you, not me, not whoever comes and replaces me one day. It's never going to happen. You, you got to try to bring elements of what Scott taught you into this. I try to bring elements of what you taught me into this. When you and I met at Summit seven years ago for the first time, you were intimidating to me because you were the TV host. But you and I hit it off immediately, and we didn't get a chance to work together You know, probably till about a year into it. Um, and then you become the TV host and I start doing some pit reports, you know, when Leslie couldn't make it and starting to develop there. And then we switch networks. So they, they come to me in 2019 and say, Hey, can you, you know, bring a, a, a sport coat to summit? 
and I auditioned to be the TV host. And um, Scott called me one one night and said, hey, you know, you got the job. I made three phone calls that night. I called my wife, I called my parents, and I called you. And I told Scott, I got to call Ryan. He said, let me talk to him first. But that was the hardest phone call I've ever had to make because you and I were so close at that point. And to have to tell you, you know, that that I had to take over this, this job, that was really hard for me. So I know how hard it was for you to take over for Scott. And and likewise, I know how he felt too, man. But uh, you know that was that was a tough experience as a friend. Um, uh, luckily, it did nothing to our friendship, I think, but make it stronger, man. But I try to bring elements of what you what you taught me into what I do. I do every now and then say back on all four BKT tires as an homage to the great Ryan Lacoste. But uh, what do you what do you remember about you know that that transition from you know going from from TV back to live event? Uh, well, I think for Scott, you know, that wasn't an easy phone call to make. Uh, and it, it put, I, I think, a few relationships in some weird positions. And uh, it's been a while, so I don't get triggered by it. Uh, but, you know, it's all love. And again, I get it. I get how it works. And, and there was a, a, a network switch. And, uh, you know, going back to live event uh, is still fun. I, 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 that's where I started. I love hosting stand-up comedy. I love doing monster tr- uh, jam shows. I love, uh, you know, being in front of people and, and, and getting that opportunity to entertain throughout whatever's happening. Uh, on that first date with my wife way back in 2007, 2007, I told her, I was like, I want to be famous. And she's like, oh yeah, really? And uh, I'm surprised I got a second date, but uh, I did. And I, I, I like continue. I love to prove my wife wrong in very wonderful ways. Uh, and so... <laughs> I want to give her a shout out for being a good sport. I hope she watches this too. Yeah, oh, she will. I mean, being on the road doing live event and television is is very demanding. And, uh, you know, the schedules now are, are even longer. And so, you know, kudos to the extended season that Monster Jam has been able to put together. I think the tours next year are going to be awesome, which uh, if I'm going to throw uh, any money behind anyone, I think Weston is going to destroy everyone on his tour uh, next year. And uh, you know, I look forward to maybe poking my head around every once in a while. Well, your your work is timeless in Monster Jam. You can still see some of your episodes on our YouTube channel. Some of your episodes air on Mav TV as well, right here. And uh, you can also catch you on Ballers. Talk about filming that show. It's pretty cool. Uh, it was unbelievable, and and actually, it was kind of unique experience. So we were supposed to film everything in Las Vegas there during the event, and uh, Dwayne Johnson had a death in the family, so he had to leave. So at two in the morning, we filmed the stunch scene where um, Chuck Werner crashed the truck and then all the tech comes out and uh, there was a big stunt double for The Rock that kind of walked in at the end where he's like, I'm going to bring a football team to Las Vegas. And so at two in the morning, Chuck Werner is full throttle in Las Vegas. And I'm like, oh my gosh, so many people have to be so mad right now. But, you know, Hollywood gets away with a lot of fun things. Uh, and you know, there's, I had my own trailer, the catering was unbelievable. Uh, and then I had to go back to LA uh, and then we green screened a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, when you see the, that, that scene where he crashes, so there's a green screen, there's me and the rock. We filmed the scene. Then they green screen the truck in upside down. Then they green screened all of the fans in from the actual world finals. So, I mean, the way that they can really make that look like one scene, unbelievable. And, um, Dwayne uh, and everybody with Ballers were absolutely fantastic. Uh, Coletti was his stunt double. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, David Katzenberg was a great director. Uh, now, uh, my only goal is to be in a Godzilla movie. Yeah, I'm not... J- I'm not jealous at all, Ryan, that you got to meet The Rock. Not at all. I, I, of course, I know that Dwayne Johnson is a, a loyal viewer of the show. So, Dwayne, uh, when you're watching this episode, next time you're in Florida, I got a seat right here for you, buddy. Come on to Inside Monster Jam. Speaking of Inside Monster Jam, more of this coming up next with Ryan Lacoste. It's your fan questions. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. This week, I'm joined on the Great Clips Hotline by Ryan Lacoste. Each and every week, you can follow me on Instagram at ScottJordanMJSX and get your questions asked right here on the show. We're going to get right to it. Now, a lot of these questions did involve, you know, the back on BKT tires and how you got into announcing. So we've already asked a lot of that. But Ryan, if you want to go ahead and say, you know, he's back on all four BKT tires once just to make the fans happy, I'll leave that to you. Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to over-modulate my Apple headphones probably, but he's back 
on all four BKT tires, baby. There you go, fans. That one was for you. Also, too, um, to people to like curious, because I think the question more is like, how do they get into hosting? And I know that in the indie circuit, a lot of drivers are like, how do I get into the get into Monster Jam? And for hosting, you know, it, the, yeah, how do I get better at public speaking? Uh, I say. Um, go do five minutes at an open mic night at a comedy club. Yeah. You might do great. You might bomb, right. but you'll figure it out. And the goal is telling your story. Uh, and so once you get comfortable with who you are as a person, that's the most important factor. And you're going to do so much better than most people. No, I love that advice. And if any of you have ever watched me host the award ceremony, you know that sometimes they don't laugh and that's still okay. <laughs> it doesn't mean... <laughs> It doesn't mean you gotta tell you're good not jokes, funny. man. Yeah, Come on. All right. Uh, Chris Bialik <laughs> wants to know what's your favorite, who's your favorite Monster Jam uh, announcer of all time other than Scott Douglas? Uh, so like live event? Uh, yeah, live event oh, in history. Right. I mean, TV. I've always I've always admired Leslie Mears. Yeah. I think she's absolutely amazing. She's gonna be one of those that gets inducted into the Hall of Fame, just like Scott Douglas. Yeah. Uh, like in Monster Trucks, Brett Kepner was a guy I used to love back in the 80s. And 90s, uh, he used to wear leather pants and like those guys, like they'd have one foot on the crush car while the truck's doing a wheelie in front of them. I mean, they were they were wild men back in the day. Um, oh, that's but, cool. uh, you know, Scott, Army, um, I'm trying to think like some of the, the the ones I've really enjoyed working with in the booth were Tom Mentz, um, Todd LaDuke was always really easy to work with. Uh, and it was fun uh, working with Bryce, uh, but also Camden Murphy, giving him his shot and uh, man, that dude is going to win a world finals championship. Yes, I know it. And uh, you, I'm actually wearing leather pants here under the desk too today. Prove it. It's, it's so Prove uh, not, it. they're not going to see those at all, but I like the style. A lot of questions here, Ryan. Also uh, asking if you're ever going to come back to monster jam. And as your friend, I don't know the answer to that either. So I'm, I'm curious as well. Well, let's just say, um, I haven't signed anything yet, but you'll probably see me in November at Feld Entertainment Studios for the Monster Jam Summit. Hey, I'll be here and you'll be here. That'll be great. Yes. I and can't wait to sign all of your awesome pictures back there. I know you want my autograph. I got a bunch. I'm going to put one right behind me. I do want to let all of our fans know next week, it's the 50th episode extravaganza. And we're opening up the Inside Monster Jam mailbag for the first time ever. I'm handing the show off to you. All of your questions, all show long right here. Ryan, man, so good to see you, buddy. My I hope questions? to catch up with you soon. Your questions too, Ryan. Whatever you want. Whatever you want to yes, ask. Yes, yes. Thanks uh, for having me, Scott. You know, Instagram, Scott Jordan, MJSX. That's all the time we have. I'll see you right here next week on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil.